I do believe we are live. Coming to you live from Los Skankridge, Alaska. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Chatting It with Chook, my weekly uh, question and answer session where you can ask Chook a question. Um, can you guys hear me? I uh, Let me know if it's working. Last time I had trouble with that headset, so I'm trying out a different headset. But yeah, a lot of fun things to talk about here. Um, I did want to give an update on the patches. I f forgot to put that in the description, but uh, that's going pretty good. Um, live and still live. All right, William, you're back. Um, so I guess everybody can hear me. Um, so like an idiot, I didn't uh, check my uh, trash box or whatever, the... Uh, the junk spam email folder. So I did find uh, like four more, um, or at least, yeah, four more um, of you guys that had um, sent me your addresses. So I'm only missing a few now. I'm missing um, Ant Dizanuts TV. Uh, I got Joss Mafia. Dean Corbin. Stan Summers and one AR Spider seventy four. So you guys need to email me to claim your patch. Um, and I'm sorry about the junk folder, guys. Uh, you guys are going to get yours a little late uh, because I already sent it out. All the other patches out. So I sent twenty patches out. One guy got it just in time because I had uh, I hadn't seen his uh, his uh, address. So I got. Uh, Sean McKeegan's just in time, but um, I almost had a heart attack because I was going to send them priority, priority, and they'd say, oh, I'll be $8 each, and I was like, what? But then I figured out I could do it first class for three fifty. dollars so you guys are getting a $10 value. Um, but anyways, uh, we don't have CVS up here, but if you ever go to the lower 48 and you buy just like one bottle of Tylenol for, from CVS, they're like, here, let me print you out your receipt. And that's what I got here, so... I promised everybody, and I sent them a day late, sorry about that, I sent them Saturday, not Friday, but I promised everybody tracking numbers, but it would just take me forever to email everybody and type in their tracking number, um, so what I'm going to do if there's any problems, I will go ahead and um, uh, just email me and then I'll send you the tracking number, we'll try to track it if you don't get it. Now, uh, a couple of the guys are from Anchorage, you're going to get yours Monday, um, but like the guys on the East Coast, it's probably going to be Thursday or Friday before you get yours. The Oregon guys will probably get them sooner. So, old Doc, old Doc Simmons. All right, where are you at, old Doc? Jonathan, I made it for a change. Yeah, you're here. I got through cooking all my kids and have a break. Thank you for sending those patches, Chuk. Yeah, Jonathan, you made the cut because you, uh, I got yours in. Um, so, yeah, yours is sent out. Let's see, uh, have to see where you are. It was pretty interesting seeing where everybody was. Um, uh, you know, we got guys in Arizona, Pennsylvania, a lot in Connecticut and Pennsylvania, Utah, uh, Florida, uh, a couple from Cali, Alabama, uh, Ohio, Texas, Florida, a New Yorker, that was cool, Nevada. Oh yeah, William. My uh, I gotta ask how far my dad grew up from Elko because my my family is from Nevada, um, Knoxville, Illinois. Wow, it's cool. Some people are in the country and they live in houses, and other people are like in really uh, urban areas, like in Miami, where you can just tell it's a huge city. Um, what What was cool is uh, I finally got a hold of a prep show. And I, 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 just from his name, Prep Show, welcome to Prep Show YouTube channel where we do prepping here in Georgia and it's all about stacking 556 five, and all our ARs and prepping and so um, I thought it was like Chuck's cousin or something from Georgia and, and so when Prep Show emailed me, it turns out he's in Poland. So I appreciate uh, the support, Prep Show. It's going to take me a little while to, to, to send you your patch. I, I sent... Uh, 
something to the Philippines once, and hey, boy, they have to put it under lock and key. It's kind of a process, so I'll figure it out, but you will get your patch. It'll be a, a few weeks before I send it. Um, that is cool. He was telling me that they have hog hunting there, but uh, it, he, do, he does fishing more because uh, in Poland, it's like a rich guy thing. They do the uh, fancy uh, kind of rich guy um yeah, it's kind of like Europe. They have a lot of private property, and it's like sporting type deal. William S. Hey, thanks for the the comment and the super super chat. Um, so yeah, William S. is getting two uh, two patches. He's a Patreon supporter. Um, but yeah, J Poland, uh, and they do hog hunting in there. But he does mostly uh, mostly fishing. Uh, man, when I was uh, when I was twenty years old, I worked at KFC for a short time here in Anchorage, and I worked with this Polish woman, uh, yeah, she had a thick Polish accent, and, uh, had this bright blonde hair, she looked like a goddess, I was an idiot for not asking her out, idiot, uh, but anyways, that's neither here nor there, um, so yeah, that's the patch update, um, and I apologize to, um, Aaron, uh, well, no, he, he emailed me, uh, Hunter Stand, Jossmify and Orion the Killer, your guys' uh, stuff was in the junk folder, um, and so that's why I didn't see it, otherwise it would have been sent out yesterday with everything else, so yeah, that 270 broke me, so it'll be uh, a little less than two weeks, but I, I will get your patches in the mail, and finally got a hold of uh, uh, my Canadian brother, uh, Aaron from uh, Bushcraft North of 60, boy, he's a uh, I, he was out of commission. I guess his computer broke, but I, I figured he was just building a shovel out of Diamond Willow there in the Northwest Territories and fighting off the the uh, bears and wolves that were attacking him. But that guy's hardcore. I I feel bad because I thought it was near uh, the Yukon. I have fond memories of driving through the Yukon, but I haven't driven through Northwest Territories. That's eastern and way up there. But man, I'm jealous of him. He lives in a crazy area full of wolves and bears. All right, kinfolk, the boys are going hog hunting tonight here in Florida tonight. Wow. Hunter stands here. Hey, welcome. Uh, William S., 10, 10 minutes from Elko. Interesting. Oh, speaking of uh, speaking of hog hunting, I, and I'm going to kill uh, Hammerheart. Yeah, I can't believe Hammerheart doesn't have more, uh, more subscribers. He does cooler stuff than me. He uh, shoots mini guns and stuff. Hammerheart uh, outdoors, he's one of our Alaska... Alaska guys, YouTube guys, he just uh, went to, I guess, Florida, I saw him do some, uh, he posted a video taking his kid to Disneyland, they're like, yeah, we're a bunch of trash people in Disneyland, you know, being obnoxious, and I thought, oh, he's just taking his kid to Disneyland, he caught like a big bass, and he just shot, I'm going to kill him if he doesn't have video footage of this, he just shot a giant hog with thermal vision, uh, see if you guys can see that, but um, man, I hope he posts a video of that. So he went hog hunting in uh, Florida, I guess, and he's got a, it looks like it's probably an AR-10, uh, but he's got thermal vision on that, so that's just crazy. I'm jealous of him. I, I need to go to Florida and do that, or Texas or something. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then, uh, yeah, but yeah, the viewer from Poland, and a couple guys from Canada, that's cool, Canadian brothers there, but anyways, yeah, there's only four guys that have not claimed their patches, one AR Spider 74, uh, Stan Summers, Dean Corbin, and Ant Disease, Dee's Nuts, Dinuts TV, so you guys need to email me at chooksoutdoor at outlook.com to claim your patch, so things are going pretty good, it's still, uh, miserable here it's been cold um you know we were all excited it warmed up and then suddenly a cold system moved in have you already do bows here that's not a hog that's a car with fur i know right it's huge kinfolk says that they say they are breaking out the thermal scopes they have been baiting the hogs and they said there are lots of them wow yeah see i'm jealous we uh we don't have hogs here they're so destructive though man they destroy uh crops and stuff just kill them kill them all um i think they would survive here i'm shocked nobody has tried to release hogs here even though it's so cold like in certain areas they would definitely survive here but um we don't have a lot of farms for them to destroy unless they went to uh palmer or wasilla but people would just hunt them down so 
No wild hogs here. We don't even have any whitetail, although whitetail are slowly making their way up through Canada here, even mule deer. Once in a while they spot one, but it'll be decades and decades before they, they move in. Um, so yeah, we uh, I'm glad that we didn't go hunting yesterday. Um, we just went to the range and we had a lot of fun. I, I'll... Uh, in the next coming weeks, you'll see the extreme penetrators versus the AR plate. But just as a teaser, these are what happened to the solid copper extreme penetrators. I don't know if you could see that. They smushed flat. Uh, I think this one's the 380, and this is uh, it's probably the 10 millimeter. But um, anyways, they that AR 500 stuff is amazing. It just uh, squished it flat. So... Yeah, we went, uh, Chuck and I from Alaska Ballistics went shooting and we filmed some videos, had a lot of fun. Uh, we're both getting over our cold, so I'm feeling better now, so I'm glad we did that. Um, been trolling Chuck lately. Chuck said, hey, uh, you know, these other channels are telling me, you know, the crazy Scotsman, Allen B. Pro, they're telling me that you're throwing me under the bus. You're, you're talking a lot of crap about me on your live streams. I just looked at him and said, yeah, I am, Chuck, because you deserve it. You know what? You deserve it. But yeah, yeah, I'm just joking. He doesn't care. We're, we're going to troll each other. We're actually going to troll each other for a good cause. You know, we'll, we'll do like a charity video where we'll troll each other. Um, I know there, he, he's really involved with C-Max and um, what is it? It's all... Um, I told him I'd give it a shout out, but I'll look it up here. But um, I think there's only one day left to get that shirt for Mr. Holster, who's struggling with cancer. So I like that. But anyways, we're we're trolling each other. I don't want to give it all away here, but I'll just give you an example of what I have to deal with. So I uh, we planned to go to the range or like the shooting gravel pit uh, yesterday, and I, I called him and I said, hey. Um, you know, I got to drop my kids off. I'm not going to be able to live, leave town till you know, 930 in the morning. And he just started belly aching. Oh, 930. We won't get a good spot. I want to be out there by 8. I, I've got to be somewhere at 230. You know, I pack 500 pounds of water bottles and it takes me four hours to set up. How are we going to do any? Ninth, just, just miserable belly aching. And of course, as always, he called me the next morning like, oh, I I slept in, got a late story. So he didn't leave till nine anyways. We had plenty of time, but that's just an example of what I got to deal with with that, that guy. They're like cockroaches in Texas. You can't kill or eradicate them now. How much, how much you try? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a twofold sword, two edged sword because people like to hunt them. But on the other hand, they, those farmers hate them. They destroy crops and they just proliferate. Um, no hunting over here in Miami. Jonathan says, if you want to go hunting, I have to drive at least three hours north. Interesting. Yeah, P hogs. When we are getting to the Bigfoot stuff again. Oh, we can talk about Bigfoot later. Sounds super interesting. In oh, interdimensional. Yeah, you had that, that question. I'll talk about that later. I'm going to get through a couple things. Um, so I went to the bank uh, yesterday, and uh, it's the same bank. My bank was robbed. I talked about it in a live chat three weeks ago. So they've stepped up uh, security. Uh, there was like, uh, you know, this huge security guard there. And so I went in. I, I hate this sweatshirt. I don't know why I always wear it. Because for some reason it prints. We were walking around. I asked Chuck, hey, am I printing? He's like, uh, yeah. And then I looked at, he looked at him. And I was like, well, you're printing too. And he didn't even care. He had a big clip hanging out. Um, you know, this belt clip. But anyways, I, uh, yeah, VP9 is loaded. Um, I, I added the pinky extension. Uh, I need to just get a 13 rounder, but I got the pinky extension there uh, just because it, it helps my pinky. But with the pinky extension, it prints a little bit more, so I feel like I have a big brick there when, when I turn around. But anyways, I went in the bank. I knew I was printing, and there was this huge uh, Samoan security guard. He looked really tough, and he was just, you know, the bank has been robbed several times, so he was just checking everybody out. And I walked in with a big giant gun print right there you know and i'm a good citizen if anybody try to rob a bank if if i felt they were dangerous or going to kill somebody i would stop them um but i could just feel his eyes burning into my back <laughs> it made me nervous but i was being cool you know i had my wallet and i just just got my money and uh, made a deposit and left but yeah that wasn't fun you know there's a giant security guard there and you're just like hello i'm bringing my gun in the bank here 
Anyways, oh yeah, Chuck's here. He heard me. He heard. Oh good. Uh, AK Server 907's here. He's he's got a new true cat. Um, sounds like you should get a tax deduction for being friends with Chuck. Yeah, you could say that again. Big thanks to Chuk, even though we troll each other really hard. He let me use his scar heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Blam. Yep. 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 Chuck. 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 Tell us what the uh, what C Max and Mr. Holster. Uh, uh, the hashtags are truck if you can because I, f- I forgot what that is. I wanted to get one of the C-Max shirts, but I'm uh, pretty broke because of the uh, 270, which I'll talk about. So with Wesson 642, uh, Chuck complains about 9.30 a.m. and then wears sweatpants to his ass crack, hangs out in Skechers round sold you. I wasn't going to say it, Chuck, but you had plumber crack in that video. You got you to gotta increase your editing skills. I know I, I need to I need to lose some weight too, but yeah, Chuck had a uh, plumber plumber crack in that video. It was a good video though. We need to do some more scar stuff. So I I've got such a nice setup, and I hate to break it up, but I I can't. So so the uh, Kimber Mountain Ascent, the 270 I'll be getting. Somebody suggested I get the lightweight scope rings, and then I get one of those Leopold lightweight scopes, and I wanted to. Uh, but yeah, I just can't afford a scope right now, so I'm going to take the Burris E1 full field um, off the scar, and I'm going to put an old, like, 70s Leopold with the metal, black metal on it. On it, It's going to look funny, but it'll, it'll work. Those are good scopes. And I'm going to put the E1 full field Burris scope on the 270. Not the lightest, but it's still, you know, I'm going to have a rifle that's, like, at five pounds, just the lightest rifle I've ever seen. Yeah, at least they're covered with the chronograph. William S. says, Smith & Wesson 614, you tried to cover it with the crony screen. Oh, yeah, but it didn't quite cover it. Save C-Max. So hashtag save C-Max and hashtag it's all about Jack. So um, C-Max and Mr. Holster are battling cancer, so I definitely want to support those guys. Chuck is really good about making a little YouTube community with these other other guys, um, you know, the Allen B. Pro crew and uh, Crazy Scotsman. Those guys are pretty cool, so I'm trying to get in with those guys too. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to put the Burris E1 full field on the 270. Um, it got delayed, uh, but they never make me wait the full four business days or whatever. I'm sure I'll get it in the next couple days. But otherwise, I'll be getting it Thursday, and I'll have a, a video Saturday up of the Kimber Mountain Ascent in 270. That will be my primary hunting gun this year, uh, except for Large Bear, which will be the uh, um, 338. So, But Chuck and I have a plan for a new secret spot to hunt bear, uh, and I, I like it uh, because I, I know there's bears there. I've seen chewed up salmon scared the crap out of me out there um so we're going to check that out um and i don't at this point i need the meat but i want chuck to kill a bear because like i said i I keep saying i'm going to go pay for that bear rug but it's still sitting in the taxidermist office um i owe 180 bucks on my black bear fur from last spring so uh hopefully i'll get it this month but um yeah i don't even want to get a bear right now. I t- keep telling Chuck, you can shoot a bear and you can pay for the, get the skin. So is it in digi camo? What's that? Uh, William S was what? Oh yeah. Yeah. The 270 is, um, for some reason they, they didn't offer the Creedmoor in digi camo, which is weird. The Creedmoor is green, but I told him I, you know, I, I kind of was leaning for a Creedmoor for like a day, and then I was like, no, I, I need a 270. Um, so I told him I want the 270. He's like, oh, it's not in all green. It's just in the digi camo. But that, that's what I want anyways. And that's a, a Kevlar uh, stock. I guess that's how they got it so light. But speaking of Kevlar, check out what my buddy gave me for my helmet. This is a attachment um, and I can buy, I'm, I'm going to order off of Amazon a GoPro attachment for this. You just clip it in and snap it down. But this is pretty cool. Now, if I were a true operator, I'd get the night vision because that's what they, they, they use this primarily for is to put the night vision on there. But uh, I can't afford $3,000 for a, a night vision setup. But anyways, I'm really excited about that because when I do my Tactitard training, I will now have a, a GoPro on there and uh, you'll be able to do that. And I, I need to get with uh, Do It Right to do some training because um, 
I'm just starting out, and uh, boy, Chuck was trolling me hard, me trying to be an operator and uh, in training. Um, I did want to talk about military gear for hunting. I think I will bring some military gear. Um, so I got an AFAC medical kit. Now this was I, this is like bare bones army. I think I've seen some of the ones uh, from the Marines and stuff that had some more stuff. I liked them a little better. Uh, one thing I wish it, I wish it was solid green, and I wish it had some uh, Velcro so I could put the medic patch on it. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen one of these. I never liked wearing my helmet when I was in the army. Jonathan said, "Yeah, I don't blame you." But uh, yeah, it's just your basic IFAC. Um, so it's got the retaining strap, which is pretty cool. When you pull out the medic kit, um, I got some extra. It's got this restraining strap. I, I like that, the retaining strap. So it's got the, um, what should we call it? The tourniquet, right, that fits right there. Now, this is the military style tourniquet. Uh, I put an extra one in, one that my buddy Brandon gave me. Just so I could have two, because if you get both of your legs blown off, I don't know how that would ever happen in, here in civilian life, but you hurt both your legs, then you're going to have to tourniquet each leg. And so this is different. This is like a it's like paracord or something, where this is like your standard kind of Velcro strap military tourniquet. Um, so it's missing some of the stuff that I've seen in other IFACs, but you've got your tape right there. Um... You've got the compressed gauze. This is it's it's the emergency bandage, the hemorrhage control. It's another compression bandage that's in there. You've got your rubber gloves, and then this is that esophageal straw thing where you punch a hole in your buddy's neck if he's so he can breathe or whatever. Um, I, I can take uh, or I can sit in on some of our med debt trainings. I need to do that to just figure out how to use some of this stuff. But uh, as far as bringing this on hunts, it's a little overkill, but it's not heavy. Um, I, on certain hunts, I might I might bring this along. It's, it's going to go on my battle belt if I can ever find the uh, room for it. Uh, my battle belt is already full of all kinds of stuff. But, uh, yeah, just your AFAC medical kit. Um, yeah, it's missing some of the stuff that I've seen on some, uh, some other ones. But it's just basic. I could add some stuff to it. But, eh, feels like it's about 14 ounces. I don't know. It might be overkill. You wouldn't want to bring it on a sheep hunt. But just basic bear hunting, I, I think it might be a good idea just to bring something like that. And then, oh, any meds in there for dealing with your buddy Chuck? Yeah. I'm going to throw this in here. This is the meds I, I'll put in there for dealing with my buddy Chuck. Just pop a couple pills and ignore him. Make his voice go away. Wear one of your tourniquets on your vest and another on your IFAC. There you go. Yeah. I was thinking of that's a good idea. Put one on my tongue. The other military gear I was going to show you guys is the poncho. Now, I didn't get the poncho liner. Uh, I probably should because that helps a lot. But these are super cool. Um, this is just your basic military poncho. Um, I don't know why I, I traded a gun once for some cash and like a like a five hundred dollar Sitka gear jacket. I should have just got one of these for super cheap because um, this will keep the rain off you. And then you put the liner on it, and it's got these grommets for uh, uh, you make a shelter out of it. Uh, anyways, it's super cool. Uh, there will be certain hunts. With, it's pretty lightweight. Well, I might stuff this in a backpack just because in September we get some pretty pretty uh, bad rainstorms. Chuck from Alaska. Alaska. Oh, Hammerhearts here. Poncho liners, a.k.a. Whack Shack walls. Yeah, he would know. You better have uh, recorded your hog hunt, Hammerheart. We want to see that, that video. Look into the Israeli combat gauze. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard of that. Um, Took as much as I could when I was in the army. Yeah, it does. I don't have the Israeli style there. Um, Kelty Tactical makes a poncho that is two hundred dollars that that you could use as a stretcher, and it's it's got you know a lot better material. And that's what I wanted, but I couldn't couldn't afford the Kelty Tactical one. But uh, if you're interested in in a poncho, the Kelty Tactical is better than your basic GI poncho. Yeah, Alaska Ballistics, uh, you need that poncho. I'll get with me later. I, um, I don't know where to get them. Uh, 
I really should just get the poncho liner, so I'll probably do that. TAC Med Solutions OS 4. Four inch or six inch bandages are the best in my opinion. Smith & Wesson 642 saying that. CD, when you bear hunt, how far do you have to hike in? Uh, it depends. Usually, uh, if I'm getting dropped off by boat, uh, not as far um, because psh, I killed myself hiking for two days and then shot one 200 yards from my tent last year. Idiot, I should have just stayed by the tent and cooked bacon and hung out. Uh, when, when I go into some mountain hikes, uh, it, it's hiking for days, so it can be pretty far. It just depends. It was a thermal hunt. I can't afford a night vision camera. Oh, he didn't. Uh, hope you did a half, used a light and just at least talked about it. Yeah, night vision cameras, those are, those are expensive. Um, dang it. Well, you'll always have it in your memory. But if it didn't get on film, it didn't happen, right? Yeah, who cares? Um, so yeah, I should get the liner for that poncho. Um, but yeah, it it uh, would make a difference. Have you ever bear have had bear trolling in your tent at night? CDs is asking. No, um, but my buddy. Uh, this is a cool story. So my buddy, it wasn't the northern slope, Arctic slope, but he went to western Alaska to work for an oil company, and they were doing, you know, drilling or fracking, or not fracking, but, they, you know, it was probably natural gas. But anyways, they made him sleep in a tent in the middle of, an, of the, the bear habitat uh, because there was too many people in the barracks. Um, and they said, no guns, you know, you're, you're on... Uh, you're, you're on company time. You cannot bring a gun with you. And he was like, screw that. They're making me sleep in a tent. I'm bringing a gun. So he brought his 44 and he was sleeping out there. And this is where the monster coaster and coastal southwest brown bears are. And the coastal brown bears get, you know, like a thousand pounds. He was sleeping. He was in his tent and he heard a bear crunch up to him. And, you know, those tent have those thin walls. And then he saw a bear's head that was like this big uh, press into the tent and sniff so he could see the outline of the snout of a giant brown bear, not a black bear, a brown bear, pressing into his tent going, <sniffs> and he had his 44 and he was just like that, shaking, just just ready to fire right into the head. And then it backed off and went away. But, you know, he probably peed in his sleeping bag and, and whatever, um, what was that guy's name? Was a good, uh, my buddy Alan. Um, but anyways, could you imagine? I I think I would have fired. I would have just like had a nervous breakdown, just a boom, 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 right in the head. Um, you know, lost my job and everything. But I thought that was a cool story. Um, oh God, Chuck is still talking. That's why everyone needs to go support Mister Holster with the shirt. It covers the crack. Yeah. Well, at least it's a good good cause for Mister Holster. Thermal plus walker, game ears, muffs equals predator, Smith & Wesson 642 said. Yeah, so, um, but I've never had bears. I, With my luck, they'll only come around if I'm, like, camping, but when I'm hunting, they, they know what hunters are, so they just stay away. We did have a bear come into camp when I was at the top of a mountain, passing out, and almost got eaten by a bear because I passed out next to some pork sausages, and then my buddy was down in camp, and uh, I had cooked this porridge with bacon grease in it just to attract bears and a bear came around and was like grunting um and i came back after you know killing myself going up this mountain and he said yeah a bear tried to come into camp and uh he's one of my military buddies i was like why didn't you shoot it and he's like oh i uh i didn't see it it was around the corner and i wasn't gonna go around the corner and shoot it i didn't want to shoot it in the butt i wanted it to come around the corner which it never did and then I was just like, oh, idiot, I just killed myself on the mountain, and you had a bear 30 feet from you, and you didn't shoot it. So anyways, it's always something, but that was uh, probably the closest to bear. Uh, you know, I wasn't there, but it was next to my tent. Where's the website to buy the shirt? Oh, William S., it's, uh, you go to, I'll put the link on this later, but you just go to Teespring, so T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G, dot com and then just search chooks outdoor adventures and the store comes up there and there's different shirts and hoodies and you can order uh so teespring.com they're, they're a pretty cool website um chooks likes to sleep next to the food yeah i i'm going to start taking benadryl before hunts because get 15 minutes of sleep is is not doing it for me 
Uh, it's just not doing it. So start getting more sleep. Frag out clothing. Oh, frag out clothing. Sorry, that's that's for the 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 uh, the shirt. Yeah, frag out clothing for the Mr. Holster shirt. And there's only one more day or two more days for that. They have the new bacon flavored sunscreen. Try that for bear hunting. Yeah, yeah. Slather some on Chuck while he's sleeping. But yeah, frag out clothing for the uh, shirt to support Mr. Holster. Um, let's see. Oh, gun trading. So, uh, as you know, uh, Chuk broke the bank because, you know, Juan is such a stand-up guy. Uh, he said, oh, four to, four to six weeks, um, for the 270. And then like a week later, Hey, it's here. So I, luckily it was payday, but I had to scramble and, uh, you know, Use, put money together to get the 270 um but th now now i have to pay bills so i've just been like hustling and uh i'm starting to get my old moves back so i i traded my scope because that thing is way too heavy for the 270 i had that giant tactical scope the nikon i gave that to chuck for a 44 um and i was able to sell the 44 in two and a half hours so i'm starting i'm getting my mojo back Get my mojo back. I had that thing moved. And that was to a, a military guy I knew from forums. So um, everything was cool with that. Um, so I sold that. But I was thinking about trades because nobody has money right now. The, the uh, economy is pretty tough in Alaska. It's going back up. Thankfully, the price of oil for us, bad for everybody else. But the price of oil is going up. And they're starting to drill more, and the economy is getting a little better. Uh, but for a while, it was pretty bad. So nobody has money. They all want to trade. And I was getting these trade offers for that 44. And one thing I wanted was, uh, even though I don't like Springfield, they did. Uh, they made some good moves the other day when they're, you know, going out in support of the Second Amendment. Uh, uh, XD Compact and 40. Now, Do It Right's doing all these uh, videos on how he's switching from 9 mil to 40 and i like it i like 40 uh smith and wesson that's a great caliber so i really wanted it. i could have got ammo with it and it was a subcompact uh 40 caliber um xd and that would have been sweet matt lawrence chook hey matt lawrence is the designer if you guys need some uh if you guys need some work he designed both my logos so this was designed by matt lawrence and he is now on the live stream. So if you guys need, uh, find him on Facebook or something. If you need uh, some logos for your business or your book or your YouTube channel, this guy's the guy to go to, man. I, I need to have him do another one for me. Uh, and Matt Lawrence is here. He is the designer of all of Chook's logos. I went to college with him in Colorado. I think I just some viewers from Colorado. Yeah, we went to... Um, Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. Man, I'm an idiot for not... I, I wasn't even into fishing that much. I only fished when I went to Alaska. But man, if I wasn't into hunting and fishing back then, I would have had such a blast. I should have even been mountain biking. All I was doing is partying and pissing my life away back then. But um, man, uh, Durango, Colorado. I, I visit there once in a while. That's just a beautiful place. Um, it's been the Western 642 tame, TameSolutions.com. Uh, all right, Alaska Surfer's still here. Felton, Hammerheart, Matt, I need to talk to you about a logo. Yeah, there you go. I, I can hook you up with his info. He's already on it. Thank you, bro. Appreciate the shout out. So yeah, Hammerheart needs a new logo. You need to have the logo of you uh, with a mini gun, shooting it out of a helicopter, and then holding up a hogshead like that, and then just saying, "Oh, Wolverines." <laughs> I think that would be your logo right there. So if Matt could get on that. Oh, there, there you go. There you go, there you go guys. Uh, Matt at mattlawrence.net. Yeah, he's got his own website. He does comedy stuff. Dark comedy, though. Dark comedy. Be warned. That, that guy has a twisted sense of humor. What's the max distance you would try to take a bear? Oh, man. Don't ask me because I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. I, I take long shots. Well, not really. Um... I I don't think I would go over 600 yards, but even that's ridiculous. You don't want to wound a bear. That's too much. Um, probably three, 400 yards is the max distance I would go. Uh, you definitely don't want to wound. And it depends. I, I would only take a long shot if it was on a mountain with no shrubs. Because a lot of times you'll find them on the, these clearing openings on the mountains where there's just tundra. There's no, no trees. So I would take a long shot there. But if, 
if you're in bear country and there's brush everywhere, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't take a long shot because oh, that is so terrifying wounding a bear. It's probably the most scared I've been is coming back the next morning to find my grizzly bear and walking at the long because I shot it at midnight. The sun was going down. And I knew I hit it. I, I hit the bear, shot it right through the heart, 180 grain nozzler, rah, biting at itself, spinning, rah, crashing off, and then I heard it fall down. And uh, I knew it was dead, but I came back the next morning, just first the rifle, and like I couldn't, it was shaking, I couldn't hold the camera. Then so I had the uh, pistol out, and I was holding the camera. Huge blood trail. It was just spurting gallons of blood. But then you see your brown bear there. I didn't even want to come up to it. It was just like, oh, a giant beast there. You know, poke it, make sure it's dead. Um, but yeah, it was wounded bears. They will, uh, and bears are tough. Somebody uh, commented yesterday, and he's right. You need a 4570 for a short brush gun. Even those big guns are so fast moving. Um, it's not as a thick of a thump. So 4570 is a good brush gun. 12 gauge with slugs, too. Um, William Master, a logo with bad hair on the kids' rides at Disney World. Yeah, there you go. Trash at Disneyland. Oh, no, I'm jealous. I, I took my kids to the California one. Um, I need to go to uh, Florida and shoot some hogs next year. So I, I would, you know, it's nice to get a bear at like 100 yards or whatever. Um, but, yeah, caribou, I've taken it like 400 yards, maybe 350 yards, and I got my biggest bull. Um, I took a long shot uh, with a 308, um, had a precision rifle, and um, that was pretty long. Um, and I couldn't even see him because uh, this is a subsistence hunt. I'm not, I'm not going for, uh, you know, trophies or anything. He had giant antlers, and all I could see was his antlers. Um, I saw him, and then he went into some brush, and I saw his antlers, so I shot right where I thought his body would be, and then watched him drop. That was at about 350 yards, um, and then he was hard to find. It took me an hour and a half to find him because he was so far away, and there was mountains where it just goes up and down and behind things, and man, next time I do that, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to stay in the same place, take a picture, mark where I shot him, and then use landmarks, and when I go over there, be like, okay, that's that's where he is. Um, speaking of 308, do you have any opinion on Weatherby? or Tika rifles. Um, I like them both. I would lean more towards Tika just because of lightweight, but Weatherby's been putting out some nice stuff. Um, but I like Tika, but then if you're going to get a Tika, why not just go all the way and get a Seiko? Uh, I believe they make Tikas. And then, so that's what I would get, a Seiko rifle. But some of the Weatherby's are nice. They've got some muzzle brakes on there and stuff. Um, CD thing. I'm going to break down for a 4570 Marlin. They look really cool. Have you shot one? I've shot a 4570 before, but I can't believe I can't remember if it was a Marlin. But yeah, those are really nice. Um, the hog I just shot was with a Tika 308. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a bolt action. What the heck? It looked like you had an AR-10. So you had a Tika 308 with a thermal scope on it. That's crazy. You know, old Marlin that is a marked JM. Tika can have a short length of pull. Make sure it fits. Oh, yeah, because Chuck knows everything. No, he does know more than me. Um, he doesn't know how to do a scope, okay? Because I was like, you know, I always ask Chuck for help. I was like, oh, can you help me put my scope on? And he he has trouble with that, too, because no matter how you do it, sometimes it's a little off. So uh, when I'm ready to put that scope on the 270, I'm just going to go into Sportsman's Warehouse. There's an old guy there that's an expert, uh, at putting scopes on, so it's worth the thirty dollars just to have uh, somebody who knows what they're doing put your scope on. Oh, the AR was for pictures, way lighter to hold. Interesting. Yeah, um, somebody was. Oh, they have that new tactical forty-five seventy. That's it's kind of uh, blasphemy, but I I admit I do want it. They have a forty-five seventy with a lever thing, but it's got it's all black and tactical with rails on it. Um, I think that would be a good brush gun. But really, you just just a stainless, nice short uh, forty-five seventy. Uh, you know that's what guides use. That's going to be your best bear defense gun. Um, yeah, I shot it. I, I used a thirty thirty once shooting at white tails and I couldn't even it was all messed up and I had old ammo this is in New York I, I some of my viewers are from New York um I want to go back there and, and uh bow hunt I'm not going to bring a gun there I, they would arrest me in the airport with the guns I literally I would fly to New York 
you know, with my scar or something. Oh, I've got a 19-round mag. And then as soon as I got in my car, you know, I'm going to go deer hunting and, you know, go to the family's property. They would just arrest me and they'd be like, oh, you have a 20-round mag. You're in New York State. You drove through New Jersey too. We're arresting you. Uh, just ridiculous. Even if I was just send, uh, even if I was just like staying in the airport, they would arrest me for that. So I'm gonna bring my bow to New York next time I go. Um, hopefully I'll make it in deer season. But man, monster whitetails. For some reason in the north, they just they just get really big. Um, all right, Hammerheart's gonna get a new logo. You need a new logo. The last 336, I about had the front sight crooked and I didn't see it till I got home. Wow, that's not good. We mess. We always say the same. Here, but you type it faster than me. Great minds think alike. Think alike. The tactical lever gun looks dumb, in my opinion. Hammerheart says that. Yeah, it's blasphemy. You you won just a classic stainless uh, stainless one. I I can't help but liking it though. I don't know how you can say that. You've got a tactical shotgun. Wade Goats is here. Hey, I had my jam 4570. Still have a jam Mark 39. Yes, yeah. I need to get into the 4570 game. Chuck has a handy rifle, but it's a single shot 4570. But um, yeah, those are nice. So let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I remember sending it to you. So Wade Goats, you're gonna get your patch too. Yep. Yeah, you got me your address. So now I'm only missing four people, and I know I've repeated it a couple times. One AR Spider 74. Stan Summers, uh, Dean Corbin, and Ants D's Denuts TV. Four people, only ones that, that that need to contact me. And then uh, some of the guys in Canada and Poland, I will send the uh, patches to. All right, Javier is back still in the house. Seiko's are prohibited, expensive down here, around four thousand for a basic one. Well, I can get a Tika for twenty-five hundred or a Weatherby for fifteen to two thousand. Ooh, yeah. If if you can afford it, get the Tika. I would say. Man, that's a, wow. Those are that's really expensive. And you're down in Argentina. Oh, Alaska Surfer nine hundred seven Chuk is a concept build by Henry called the Henry X One. They want feedback on whether or not they should build it. Oh, I'll do a video on that. And I say I vote for yes. Not going to be popular. See, I want both. I want a classic cowboy gun, 4570 Rancher's brush gun, and then I want one of those those tactical ones. So someday, someday it could happen if I could stop buying rivals. I'm not going to buy any guns for a while because, uh, like I said, that 270 took it out of me. But yeah, hopefully this Saturday I will have a review of the 270. Um, not sure if I'll have the scope on it or not yet probably not um but yeah looking forward to that is everything's light oh and i appreciate all the feedback on the uh the binos um unfortunately i cannot get swarovski or even vortex binos but i am gonna just get redfield's 123 dollar uh i forgot eight by 32 uh binos for the field because those ones i have are way too heavy so um, i learned a lot from you guys appreciate all the comments um i do want to talk about psa palmetto state armory i took this out uh it's clear and put the bullet button here so we got nothing in the chamber it's open there's nothing in there but man i am impressed with palmetto this thing um ran like a champ shot it for the first time um and cheap like uh oh chuck has red fields wouldn't you know he's got everything doesn't he know it all they're abused and work well uh, okay oh lever gun and 500 smith and wesson they even make that i want that too william but so psa and talk about dirt cheap so what what did i do the math at? I'm, I'm bad at math guys so this upper uh it was missing the bolt carrier group and the charging handle. It was 200 bucks, so 200 The lower was their sale uh, for 130 So now I'm at $330. I, I, they had a cool Blackhawk uh, stock, but I added this Mo, so I won't ca call, count that. Uh, another uh, 30 or another 100 for uh, 
uh, no name nickel boron carrier group. So now we're at 430. And then let's say 20 bucks for like a Blackhawk charging handle. So 450. 450 for this thing. PSA. Shot it for the first time yesterday. Oh, and like 13 bucks for the for this on Amazon, but I won't count that. But man, not a single malfunction, which is, uh, I remember when those cheap DPMS came out, I would always have in malfunctions, you know, even out of the box. Um, but man, the technology is so good now that uh, PSA, guys, I think that's the way to go. Uh, you know, some people claim that they're not that accurate. Chuck's was, he was out in good group, big groups. There we go, talking about Chuck. Yeah, oh, yeah, he knows everything. Um, but, man, I, uh, I'm a fan of PSA. Um, so there you go. You just order, wait for their flash sales and order it in parts. Um, but, man, nice AR. You know, I shot it. Not a single mal malfunction. I like that. Yeah, Smith & Wesson 500 lever gun sounds great. Jonathan says, Colt 6920, 642 said. Wood is a Colt 6920. Hammerheart, H car, isn't that the ugly remake of the bar? Could be. That big horn is expensive. I'm hoping Henry will start making them. Yeah, I, I need to learn more about uh, lever guns because... That's crazy. I don't have one. Here I am, a bear hunter, and I don't have a leather, uh, a lever gun, forty-five seventy. One of my best friends from high school in Homer, Alaska, uh, and they had a squirrel that was like eating their bird food or something. Now, this is a messed up story. I apologize for this, guys, but he shot a squirrel off his roof with his forty-five seventy just out this bedroom window. And it completely disintegrated it. I mean, the power of the 4570, those things are... Uh, I was looking at the bullets. He had Chuck had some Hornaday bullets. They're just so fat. Makes me miss my uh, 458 SOCOM upper. I should have kept that. That would have been a good bear thumper. But uh, more reliable with a lever gun. So, yep. See, everybody knows about the, the brush guns but me. I, I need to get one. I just need to get a lever action. You know Chook's going to get the tactical one, though. Sorry, Hammerheart. Um, I thought there was one already out, though. I swear I saw one that was already out. Maybe it was just they released some of those concept pictures a while back. Oh, that's good. All right, we got a lot of people in here today. Good chat. So what else is going on out there? Hammerheart, are you, are you back in town yet? Be back. We're all gonna get together and do another Alaska Channel roundtable at some point, and then I need to uh, do some training with Do It Right because um, you know he's the ex-military. He's uh, he knows a lot of good. Uh, he does a triangle method or whatever, but he he knows some good good training. So got to got to keep up on the old tactical training, guys. There's always that. So what else can we talk about? We got about ten more minutes. Uh, remind me of what I'm in the the big town of uh, of Anchorage CD. If you're talking to me, I don't know who else is. This is the the big uh, junky town. I actually like Anchorage because I can drive south or north. Um, if I'm in Fairbanks, you can. Well, I guess you could drive up the Hall Road, but you're you know you can only drive south. If you're in Homer, you can only drive north. But I can drive four hours until the road ends, and I'm at the tip of the Kenai Peninsula. Or I can drive all the way to the tip of Alaska if I want. So we're kind of in the middle and all these cool places in between. Ken Hammerheart, great minds and glad I've been joining a Marlin Trapper. Man, I need to trade for one of those. Kinfolk says, I have PSA, Mo Blemish Lower. Oh, that's where they, they sell the cheap ones because of slight blemish. I want one of those with a polished trigger. Never did find the blemish. Added a PSA 223 Wild. Thought about getting one of those. Also a Burris. 1x4 scope. I shot it today, hitting 300 yards easily, 400 yards, 70%. Not bad. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, you know, they they had a bad rap for a while, just for, you know, they're on the cheaper end of the spectrum, but I'm super happy with mine. You must think about that Mossberg Tactical 3030 lever gun. What an abomination. I know it's blasphemy. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a tactical guy. I can't help it. That's just like um, when I piss people off by putting that scout scope on the Garand. It's not that bad, but I put a um, 
a scout scope. Was it the rail? Yeah, I put a scout scope rail on the Garand and then put a, a scout scope forward scope long eye relief on it. And a lot of people were pissed off about that. And that is blasphemy. It looks ugly, but man, was that... That was more accurate than those stupid precision rifles I had with the Aces stock. I shot more animals at longer distances with my M1 Grand. That's what I need. I have more than a lever gun. I, I need another M1 Grand. That is just an awesome rifle. Do it right is a progressive eugenist dog. Eugenicist dog. I don't even know what that means. Heavy R do, but no interdimensional. Oh, interdimensional Bigfoot. Okay, yeah. Best 10 millimeter hunting ammo is the, uh, I think it's the Underwood, but not the Extreme Penetrators, but I think it's the Hunter, the Underwood Hunter. They have like some bonded, jacketed um, rounds, but I, I believe it's the 10 millimeter Hunter they put out. But you can't go wrong with any uh, 10 millimeter hollow point or something that's loaded hot. I even just like hollow points um, for, for hunting. Um, no intermittent, uh, best, I would put it EOTech reflux site, so I would buy the stainless wood stock one. Okay, uh, f I know uh, Javier Diblo has been, a a he's been uh, asking for a while about the, the, why I think some Bigfoots are interdimensional. Now, some Bigfoots, I think, are not interdimensional, like the ones in uh, Northern California, Washington. I think they're just ancient ape men or whatever that uh, survived, and they've just been able to be super smart, and people haven't found them. You know, there's not many of them. I, I believe that. It is kind of weird. Well, why haven't anybody found one? That's a good question. Maybe there aren't, but I like to believe in Bigfoot. I think it's fun, but the reason I, I think some of them are interdimensional uh, it's just because some of the Native American stories, and mainly from the Yupik Eskimo people that I've talked to, um, you know, this one guy said he would have like nightmares of a Bigfoot with like glowing red eyes, and then they would see him out, you know, looking in their window out in the middle of the wilderness, you know, in a village with glowing red eyes, and they have the ability to disappear at times, and you can't, and that's one reason why you can't find them because they are interdimensional. So, um, and there are legends tied to them with like some spirituality, like maybe even in the, some Southeast cultures. But um, just in a nutshell, that's why I believe some Bigfoot are interdimensional because because of the stories, they're able to kind of phase in and out of reality. And they're also like, they'll come into your dreams and stuff. And that's why if I see a Bigfoot, I'm going to shoot it because, uh, okay, Yankee Marshall would kill me if he heard me say that because he's he if he saw a bigfoot he would never tell anybody he's got a giant statue of a bigfoot uh, he's one of my favorite channel guys but um he loves bigfoot and he he would uh he would lynch me if i shot a bigfoot but what he doesn't understand is bigfoot in alaska are evil they're uh they've gone around killing people and scaring people they're they're not nice creatures they're like big big evil apes um so i would shoot one but i'd have to know it wasn't a guy in an ape suit because, boy, that, that would be a tragedy. And then again, if you're wearing an ape suit, you know, uh, out in the middle of nowhere where you have to get dropped off by a boat or an airplane and there's people hunting and you wear an ape suit and creep up on some hunters, I mean, you almost deserve to die if you're going to do that. Because who? it would have to be a realistic ape suit, too. If it was just like a, uh ape suit from the costume store, I would know that. Um but yeah, just I'm sorry I don't have more information. Uh, I'll, I'll look up, I'll research that more on another video. We'll do another Bigfoot, Bigfoot chat one of these days. Um, Wade loaded some 10 millimeter, very nice. Why shoot lead? I just shoot something other than lead. Why shoot lead? Um, I don't like shooting lead. I don't even like shooting hard cast lead, even though it's better than extreme penetrators, just because you have to clean your barrel so much. And even if they say it doesn't foul because it's hard cast, it still does. And I think that's one of the reasons why I screwed up that old uh, 10 millimeter Glock 20 I had because it had a bunch of lead shot out of it, hard cast. Um, why shoot lead? I, I do like lead in the center, or but just not if it's hard, fully lead hard cast. Um, 
reflex on the excess rail for the Marlin 45 Sony looks all right. I'd pack that. Hunter Stan is saying that. Alaska Ballistic. So Sith Bigfoots with glowing red eyes. Yeah, that's right. What do you, what do you know about Bigfoot, Chuck? Javi Truck 1. I have a Glock 40 MOS Vortex Venom 3 ohm way hitting 100 yards all day. That's impressive. So why don't you put a RMR on your Glock 40, Chuck? Idiot. Smith & Wesson 642, I'm going to shoot the Bigfoot too. If it's a guy in a suit, it's his fault. Yeah, you don't want to wear a Bigfoot suit. I mean, that's just ridiculous. They're not Bigfoots. They're predators. Yeah, that sounds like a predator. Phasing in and out and glowing red eyes. Shoot them. Wade Goats, I loaded 10.4 of blue dot with 180 XTP. Wow. we were Chuck and I were talking about that. I don't think we have enough brass, but we will load 10 millimeter eventually. That is nice. Uh, William S., I would like to shoot some lead rounds so I could have another option. Yeah? Isn't there a Bigfoot female? Why always Bigfoot male? Where's the Bigfoot titties? They're covered in fur. You just can't see them. Well, some of, sometimes people do report that they've seen like a female Bigfoot, sometimes babies. Do you think Chuck doing the plumber's crack in your videos is an attempt to sabotage your channel? Maybe, yeah. He's also trying to attract a Bigfoot because that was a high Bigfoot area. So like a Bigfoot in heat or something would see Chuck's plumber's crack and then come up and like uh, ruin our day. Um, I've seen some female Bigfoots around Gnome and Dead Horse. Yeah, I bet you have. Oh, that's right. You fly up there sometimes. Wade Goats also use unique with same bullet. No crony. So no, he doesn't have the speed info on it. I need to get a chronograph too. I'm going to put something on it. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, it's been a good chat, guys. I appreciate everybody watching. And uh, thanks to William Mass for the Patreon and uh, I apologize to the four people that showed up in my junk folder. It's probably going to be next payday, but you will get a patch, I promise. Um, even the ones in Canada. That's going to be interesting. I never send something to Canada. And my Polish friend, uh, Prep Show. Prep Show. I thought was from Georgia, but he is from Poland. That was just amazing. So, yeah, that's... It'd probably take three and a half weeks just to go through the mail. Then I have to do the special thing under lock and key. What rifle do I use for self-defense? Um, I think in self-defense, if somebody was like attacking me in the home, I would I would use the Scar. Um, just because it's a good battle rifle. It's more. Oh, I, I, I would like to use a uh, five five six, but yeah, it's reliable. I I could use the AR or the Scar. Um, now you'd have to put on hearing protection real quick because, man, shooting an AR, especially a pistol, an AR pistol, you would just deafen yourself shooting in a hallway or something. Um, I'm more of a pistol or shotgun guy for house self-defense. But, um, yeah, the 308, it uh, definitely work, like in an urban environment when stuff went away. Um, Chuck had a point, though. I, I could get, like, a, a smaller scope, or what I really need for the SCAR is, like, something faster acquisition, like a 1 by 4 you know, more of a red dot type thing. But I like to hunt with it, so I'm probably going to put that old uh, Leopold on there. That's going to be pretty funny, um, a Leopold on there. I kind of feel bad because I did a, I did a, a, a video... Um, Grendel versus 308. Oh, uh, 308 all day. Grendel's awesome, um, but 308's just such a bigger hole for for hunting. Um, maybe for, for like a thousand yard shot, Grendel would be better. Um, but um, yeah, I did a video dissing Leopold, and I feel bad because it was my stupid scope rings. That's why I had messed up. It wasn't the scope. That Mark IV I had was awesome. I took caribou with it. and uh, It was a good scope. But I, I do have to say that, uh, you know, Leopold is not keeping up with the technology. You know, the snipers had guys and some of these professional shooters. They, they met with Leopold and they said, guys, you know, your, your technology is from the 90s. You need to put some new stuff out. Do what Vortex is doing. And they still haven't listened. Maybe they are now. Uh, but... 
if for brand new stuff, I would go with Vortex or even some high end stuff versus Leopold. But that being said, I mean, I would, if I had the money, I'd buy one of their lightweight scopes tomorrow uh, just because it would be, you know, they're still quality scopes and it would be good for the, the 270. I use 762 for Varmint. It was AK 47 with primary arms, three, three times scope. Yeah, those primary arm scopes are nice. That's what Felton has on his. His AK variant. Uh, that thing is a dream to shoot. Coyote drops like a bag of rocks. Just plain hollow wolf ammo. Javi Truck 1 saying that. Man, not this year, but for the past two years, I've had shots at coyotes, and I've missed them every time. Never got a coyote. Maybe this will be the year. They're everywhere. They're just, they spread up here, and they spread from the east. Or they spread from like the mid Midwest or the East 70 years ago and they worked their way all the way to Alaska. That's what survivors they are. I can't even find coyotes in the hunting regs. Maybe because it's they, they invaded the area. Like you could find wolves and stuff, but I mean, uh, if, if you've seen coyotes in the Alaska hunting regs, let me know because I have not seen them. Yeah, good rings are a must. Don't cheap out. You got to have steel rings. Aim point makes pretty scopes. Um, Hunter Stan saying that. I, I, I'm I thinking that they have quality rings with the Kimber 270 because it comes with rings. Uh, so I'm going to see what they are. I'll probably use those. Um, Alaskan Ballistics Coyotes are open game all season. That's good to know because certain fur-bearing animals we cannot kill. You cannot kill a fox right now. That ends in winter and won't start back up till September up here. But I guess coyotes are invasive, so... I saw a red fox last night, but they are protected here in Wisconsin in until October. Yeah, that's the same thing here. We uh, that's like a winter fur-bearing animal. I think you got to have a trapper's license to shoot them too. So I usually get my hunting, trapping, fishing license all together. I knew knew a guy had an ND with a Taurus Judge 410 in my living room. Missed me by a few feet. Was deaf for a few minutes. You'll be deaf for a bit, no matter what you shoot in a house without ear protection. That's true. It's uh, nine millimeters really loud too. So I think a pistol would be worse. An AR pistol with that short barrel would deafen you slightly worse. Pretty good scopes. Jonathan is saying, what scopes are you guys talking about? Oh, aim point. Yeah, I like aim point. So yeah, eventually I'll get something. ACOG would be nice. That's more for an AR. Eh, 308, you can get some good distance. So I think I'll stick, stick with a variable scope with that. But uh, man, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to get off the chat, guys. But I got to work in an hour. I'm gonna try my ride my bike to work. Um, I appreciate everybody participating. We had a good, uh, good participation, good convos here. We'll we'll do another uh, Bigfoot. I'll research some Alaska Bigfoot stories, um, and we will do that next next Sunday. Um, and then to Saturday, I'll have uh, the 270 video up, hopefully. And then, of course, next Sunday I'll be back with the live stream. But, yeah, I might have some other stuff thrown in there, too. Me and Chuck doing a lot of stuff. So, all right. Stay safe out there, guys. It's Chook signing out. Yeah, thanks, guys. I won't work too hard. Yeah.